Hi, everybody. Saturday morning, um, I'll get to some of the high temperatures yesterday. PDX did make it to 91. That broke the old record of 89 for the date, uh, May 10th. That was back in 2019. The other big story, of course, a view of the Northern Lights. Um, I'm Rod Hill coming to you from the Portland, Vancouver area. And let's begin with the Northern Lights because it is one of the biggest stories in our entire country on this Saturday morning. I was up watching the news early this morning, views from uh, Portland to Washington to Minnesota, down into Missouri, uh, even Nashville, Tennessee. So one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, views of Northern Lights in recent memory here in the United States. So uh, this became news several days ago. And the fact that uh, a, this is so fun to say, a geomagnetic storm watch in effect for a good portion of the Northern Latitude states of the USA, uh, all because of a huge solar sunspot that's associated with this. And uh, the folks that monitor space weather saying that there would be activity and that Northern Lights would be a very good possibility. So I showed you this view uh, map the other day showing that all of Canada in red, a likelihood of Northern Lights. And then the green areas, at least a good 50-50 chance down through Washington, Idaho, parts of Wyoming, South Dakota, Minnesota, into Iowa and the Great Lakes states, and just barely nipping across the Columbia River. Now we know now the views actually went all the way down to Nashville, Tennessee. So I, I think it's safe to say the viewing was even more spectacular southward than what the experts uh, were projecting that this would be. Absolutely amazing. And of course, we had clear skies last night. And we, have, we will have clear skies again, not maybe at the coast, but inland areas of the Northwest as we get into tonight. Now, we talked about this the other day as well, and circled in yellow here. This is the size of the collection of what is being called one of the largest historic sunspots ever recorded or witnessed on the sun. In fact, check this out. These sunspots right here, the dark color circled in yellow, 16 times the diameter of the Earth. Remember in elementary school science, our planet Earth would be compared to a P, um, compared to the sun, which would be like a basketball. Well, this really highlights that analogy uh, right there. So strong uh, geomagnetic storm activity associated with this. And again, we expect to see um, a good view of Northern Lights, or at least we're hoping for it again tonight. You'll want to uh, basically wait until after dark. So probably at the earliest, we're talking 10 o'clock in the evening at the earliest. You want to look to the Northern sky and you want to be away from from city lights, of course, is the way all this works. More coming up in a moment. A quick word from the Momentous Wealth podcast. You can find this podcast for uh, information, all things financial and investing in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. This is from a local firm, uh, Momentous Wealth Management, licensed in Oregon and Washington. Please search them out. Todd Pasarczyk's team, really good at breaking things down and helping guide your decisions. Again, the Momentous Wealth Podcast, we'll hope you'll check it out, Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Okay, now to the fun stuff. Check this out. Oh, wow. The pictures have been amazing. They're flooding the internet, literally. So this one, a friend of mine took um, and shared it. Brian Rollins took this picture up in Kalama last night. And you can see just the tremendous coloring. And there have been a lot more. Let me just show you some of the, uh, the comments. So that was Kalama. Here's the east side of Mount Tabor, uh, Brian Little. Seaside, around the turnaround, out there on the beach. Uh, Trisha sending that photo. Uh, there's more. Uh, Montevilla Park. I think that's here in the Portland metro area. Look at that. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Here's out in Aloha. Absolutely incredible. Love this picture. This is near where I live, up in the Flida area of Vancouver. Um, and then here's one. Uh, this is down in Salem, as pretty as any of the pictures. So again, that's well down into Oregon, obviously, seeing uh, some good colors. Last night, Julie uh, in Salem as well. Just tremendous pictures, right? Uh, down, another one down in Salem. I'll say, okay, Julie posted a bunch of those. I'm sorry, Julie posted a bunch of those. But here's Scott up in Vancouver. Look at that. Just the kind of rays of color embedded behind that tree. Up in Battleground, the, the coloring just absolutely brilliant. Out in Prineville Reservoir, Bob posting that one. Downtown Vancouver, there's more. Um 
Let's see here. Foothills above Scott Mills, catching the Big Dipper, it looks like, in that picture. The beautiful lights, again, more down in Salem. Julie posting several of those. South Salem, Colton, Estacada. Look how vivid that is. Just absolutely amazing. There's Old Glory with the colors behind uh, from Camus. And there are more. And uh, Well, that one's amazing. Cheryl in the Gales Creek. Um, you know, I, I don't want to take up all your time looking at these, but they are amazing. These are off of my KGW Rod Hill Facebook page. And uh, I'll get to show these off when I do the KGW Sunrise show Monday morning. But there's more pictures. And don't forget, we could, I love that picture with the old windmill out in the farm up in Ridgefield. There's Castle Rock up in Washington. Wow. Absolutely breathtaking. Now, this animation, courtesy of KGW TV, it animates. But I just grabbed the still and I'll take you through it. Uh, KGW's Matt Safino uh, put this on the air the other day. Uh, in Portland. So here's the Earth's magnetic field, and we're dealing with the solar wind throwing charged protons and electrons emitted from the sun that interact into Earth's magnetic field. Now, here's what's interesting. So all of this activity enters the Earth's atmosphere where the field is the weakest, and the weakest field is near the North and South Pole. So that's why, in fact, if you've been wondering, these are northern lights. That's where the activity enters and interacts with our atmosphere up toward the pole. That's why it's often Alaska. It's often Canada. Somewhat rare that we get good sightings in the United States and very rare that we get widespread sightings from Oregon to Washington to Missouri to Tennessee and up through the Great Lakes. Just crazy. So, and this is also interesting. The Northern Lights or uh, Aurora Borealis, of course, we think of all the beautiful colors. So the difference of the oxygen molecules, nitrogen molecules, um, and the elevation of those molecules all play a factor in whether we're going to be looking at red colors, blue colors, green colors, or pink colors. So, and again, you can find this on my KGW Rod Hill Facebook page, but really a great graphic kind of explaining uh, what was going on. So again, tonight, I say 10 o'clock on after we're getting past sundown. Sundown tonight is um, 831. Uh, so 10 o'clock or after is when we'll get hopeful viewing up to the north, away from city lights. Just amazing. All right. The big story was uh, yesterday. Yes, Portland hit 90 degrees. So these were some of the uh, high temperatures in the area. Astoria, 84. This is maybe too small for you to see at home. I'll read these numbers to you. Seattle, by the way, also had 84 yesterday. Kelso, 90. Scafoosh, 91. Vancouver, 90. PDX broke the record that was 89 for May 10th back in 2019. And got up to 91. First 90 degree day of the year, obviously. Trotdale, 92. Hillsboro, 88. McMinnville was close, 89. Uh, I think Salem was generally around 86 or 87 for high. That report out of McNary Field in Salem. Something's wrong with the weather station. It hasn't been functioning. Eugene was 85, but Corvallis was 89. Ben stopped at uh, 79. Hermiston was 85. 71 out Meacham. Pilton, 81 degrees. Wow. Really, really um, a, a pleasant, warm to maybe hot day, depending on where you were or what you like. Okay, this uh, has surprised me. Remember, we talked about for the forecast moving forward that Mother's Day would be the cool down at the coast with morning fog and low clouds and maybe mist and temperatures generally in the 60s. Uh, so apparently the east wind fields have completely faded away at the coast because we have low clouds and fog this morning, which I was not expecting. Again, it was sunny and in the 80s up and down much of the beaches yesterday. There's gear hop by the sea. Tillamook Head, you would be able to see, but it's all socked in. The fog from the Channel House view. Now, if you go down to Lincoln County, here's the end at Ottercrest. They are seeing, see this vantage point to the right looks up to the north. You can see the low cloud bank. But there's also some low clouds looking down to the south um, in Lincoln County. But they're getting some sun. So FYI on that. Otherwise, look at the beautiful three sisters from Aspen Lakes Golf Course. Um, just beautiful sunny skies will be continuing in inland areas today. So with that said, I will tell you the forecast at this point all the way into next weekend is dry. And the confidence of it being dry, meaning there could be some changes. Some things haven't been consistent. But the confidence of dry weather being with us at least through next Wednesday is really high right now. All right. So it's uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, 922. These were the 9 o'clock temperatures. Again, Salem's weather site not working. It's not 80 in Salem right now. It is uh, 56 in Astoria, 58 in Newport. Let's go up to Astoria and see what their forecast is. So they are expecting to get the sunshine developing this afternoon. There will be morning clouds and fog along the coast in the morning and then some developing sun. But I still feel like parts of the beach tomorrow may stay under the clouds. This optimistically shows sun in 70 at the coast later today. 
I'd be pessimistic and wanting sun at the beaches tomorrow. I do like the temperatures cooler at about 63 and then morning clouds continue in the coast on Monday, maybe into Tuesday. And there's a slight chance of showers showing up on some of the models. Again, once we get past Wednesday of next week, as I mentioned uh, a moment ago. Okay, let me run through some things real quick. Seattle, 66 right now. 80 today. It was 84 there yesterday. 71 tomorrow. This shows all dry weather potentially into next Friday. It still looks like here on the west side of our state, as we go down to Medford, that uh, the hottest day overall is what we had yesterday. It is more of a westerly flow, not a strong one. And the air mass itself is not quite as toasty warm. So I expect temperatures to be at least a few degrees cooler today than yesterday's highs. Now, this shows Medford 91, 88, and then the cool down in Southern Oregon Monday and Tuesday down to 83. Just all uh, sunny skies showing up. Let's check out Bend. Uh, it was 80. Uh, it was what? 79 in Bend yesterday. I think we saw 83 today, 81 tomorrow. And then beautiful weather, 70s. That's just classic, gorgeous Central Oregon weather uh, all the way into uh, Friday. Uh, let's see here. I, I do want to go on one more. There's a cluster of folks that watch these videos from the South Oregon coast. So here's North Bend 60. Look at that. They expect clouds in the morning and then gradual slow clearing is a possibility, but look at the high on Sunday, only 58. And then probably some morning cloudiness down there Monday, but then becoming sunny and then temperature 60 or better going into Friday. Okay. With that said, let me show you my updated, uh, Portland seven day forecast. This is on my weather site, portlandweather.com. Uh, I'm going to go 88 today. It was 91 yesterday. If the weather models are correct, we will not hit 90 today. So we'll see how that works out. Certainly cooler tomorrow. Maybe we hit 80. I have us at 78, a really beautiful, mostly sunny Mother's Day. Morning cloudiness to partly cloudy on Monday. Some early clouds on Tuesday, low 70s, and then warming back up. But right now, it looks like we might stay in the 80s Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for a run of really comfortable upcoming weather. All right, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. Thanks for subscribing to my weather site. Again, you can go to my Facebook page, KGW Rod Hill, and see more of those uh, uh, Northern Light photos. There are so many of them. Wow, thanks for uh, sharing those uh, on that page, those of you that have. I'm Rod Hill, and I'll talk to you Sunday evening.